Hello everyone, this is going to be a first lecture uh, for a course on beginning scientific computing. So mostly what we're going to focus in on is just a bunch of techniques that we're going to use for solving engineering and physics based problems. And we're going to start off very simply uh, on vectors and matrices. These are the backbone of what uh, allow us to really do a, uh, the computations we'll need to be able to do throughout the, the course. So the course website's here. So if you look here, if you go to this website, you can find all the lectures, all the videos. You'll also find all the codes we're gonna go through, uh, as well as data as we bring it uh, to, to different chapters. So let's begin. So vectors and matrices. Uh, vectors and matrices are just simply collections of numbers that we store and that we're gonna be manipulating throughout uh, our time here in the course. Uh, we can start off, let's say, with vectors, which is an arrangement of number. Here you go. This is, for instance, a column vector. It is a storage of numbers in a single column of data. And this is, for instance, three rows, one column. And so this is a way to collect data and information in this sense. We can also think about a row vector. And a row vector, instead, is going to start laying out the data horizontally. So the equivalent in a row vector is here. Okay. And so whether you use row or column vectors, it's very context dependent, but we will be using both throughout the course. And it's important that you understand whether you've built column or row vectors. We also have this concept of a matrix, which is really the generalization or the uber concept that we have in this, which is a matrix is a collection of rows and columns of data. So for instance here, what we have is a three row, three column matrix. And this matrix is the kind of thing that we're going to be using throughout this course to start manipulating data and uh, ex executing different kind of engineering or physics computations that are necessary. So everything is going to be arranged as vectors and matrices. One way to think about a vector is it's just a really skinny matrix, right? It's either got a single column or a single row, depending on how you lay it out. And again, knowing whether you're going to be working with vectors or matrices is really critical, and um, and also knowing whether you're in row or column space is another big important issue to work with. But we'll just get through these as we go through the, the course. The main thing I want to establish today is how do you make vectors, how do you make matrices in Python or MATLAB, and so that's what we're going to spend some time doing here. So here are some code, and what we're going to do here with all of our code is we're going to actually, I'm going to show you the code in both Python and MATLAB, and the codes are equivalent. You can download these codes off the website. Again, the link is in the description of this video. But essentially, let's walk through making a very simple vector, either in Python or in MATLAB. So in Python, one of the important pieces of code that you have here is you start off with import numpy as np. So Python is based upon packages. And if we're going to be doing scientific computing operations, everything we're going to have to do is bring in the NumPy package. Okay? So this is where we do a lot of the scientific computation work is in this package. So it's always important that you bring it in first. Now, once you have that declared, then, and by the way, this is all set up in Jupyter Notebooks. This is how we're going to be programming most of this in the course. Uh, and so when you download this off the website, it will be as a Jupyter Notebook. Uh, but here we go. We can make the vector in a number of ways. And I'm just showing you here. I can either make the vector here. I call it x1, but I can either say equals 1, 3, 2. So what that's actually doing is just creating for us a row vector with these three components, 1, 3, 2. I can similarly define that vector instead with the np.array. So np calls this numpy package and creates this object called an array, and I fill in the array with 1, 3, 2. Okay? Or you could make NP matrix 1, 3, 2. So you could do array or matrix. These are all equivalent. And if I want to see these and what they look like in MATLAB, uh, Python, then I can just use the display as we go here. MATLAB is a little bit easier for making row vectors. There it is. You just say vectors x equals 1, 3, 2. Just a space between them. These are equivalent codes. Okay? And so what we have here is... Ooh, are these vectors and matrices. And so these are just setting up uh, row vectors. In fact, that's the vector it makes for you. So after you've done this operation in, in, in sort of an abstraction, this is what you have here. X is equal to this 
following row vector right there, okay? So that's one way to make row vectors. It's pretty simple command structure and you should be pretty fluent in this in either MATLAB or Python. And uh, because everything we're gonna do is based around matrices and vectors, it's important to become very proficient with this. We can also uh, make for ourselves uh, a column vector. Now in MATLAB, this is very easy to do. Here's the command structure for it, x1, just put a carriage return, three or two. I alternatively put, could put a semicolon here, and the semicolon denotes a return character. So this is a very simple way to construct a column vector in MATLAB, and in Python, Again, you can use something like MP matrix, and notice here, now I have one, three, and two, but each row is in brackets, square brackets. So once you have one here in square brackets, that's the first row, then a return character, which is gonna give you this comma, then the next row, return, next row. I can either do it as MP matrix or MP array. So that's it. So again, what we want to create is instead of a row vector, this is gonna create a column vector, which is given by this right here. One, three, two. So that's what we have uh, for generating very simple vectors and matrices. And these are either having three rows, one column, uh, which is here, or the previous example where what we showed was one row, three columns. In either case, simple structure to make these vectors uh, either column or row format. There are other ways to make vectors and what I'm gonna show you here are some interesting ways to sort of start making some of these. So for instance, we can start saying, I wanna make, for instance, a vector very easily by saying, I wanna make a vector going from zero and its component's gonna be zero in steps of one to 10. So for instance here, this is telling you start at zero, end at 10 takes the steps of one. The equivalent of that here is in Python, x1 equals mp, a range, go from zero to 10 in steps of one. I go to 10.1 because one of the interesting things on Python, if you say go to zero to 10 in steps of one, it'll go all the way to nine, it won't do 10, okay? And so for you to do 10, in other words, it'll take you up to the last value minus the dx that you have here, okay? So if I say 10.1, it'll go all the way to 10 because I've gone past 10 and it'll include 10, okay? So that's one way to do this, and this is gonna make a vector that has components zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So that's one way to do a vector. Another way to do a vector here, x equals zero in steps of two to 10, the equivalent, Python, zero to 11 in steps of two, for instance. So both of these are gonna go from zero, two, four, six, eight, ten, 10. And it's gonna make you that vector, so it steps in two. Remember, in Python, I have to go past 10 or it won't include 10. So now I've just said go to 11 and that will go to 10, okay? Uh, same thing here, I can don't have to take integer steps. I can go from zero, goes from zero in steps of 0.2 to one. And so this is this vector here. It's gonna go 0, 0, 0.2, 0, 0, 0.4, 0, 0.6, 0. 0.8, 1. And in Python, it's right here, NP, A range. Again, start, finish. And I wanna to go to one, so I have to go one DX past it. So 1.2 in steps of 0.2. So this is a little difference between Python and MATLAB. It's something that you should really understand so that when you're programming either language, you have this contextualized well for yourself. I can also go something like this, zero to, in steps of two to nine. And since, of course, if you step in steps of two starting from zero, you're gonna go zero, two, four, six, eight. And since, you step, since you're gonna stop at nine, you actually stop at eight. So this command here is equivalent to this one here in Python, which is MP arrange, zero, nine, two, okay? All right, so that's what we have here. Um, and then finally, if, if you do here, np arrange goes from zero to five, okay? It's equivalent to here, x goes to zero and four. If I don't specify the step size, it always takes a step size of one. So for instance here, zero to four, it means this is the beginning, this is the uh, and the end. I never gave it the step size. Normally I'd say zero, step size, and then the end. 
So if I don't specify it, it's always one. So this will go zero, one, two, three, four. And same thing here, MP arrange, go from zero and five. And then you typically have step size. If you haven't specified it, it'll take steps of one. So it's gonna go zero, one, two, three, four. Remember, it doesn't land on five. It's always one DX before that. Okay, so these are like say uh, manipulations that we can do in creating vectors and matrices or at least these are vectors. Matrices, we can do something a little different. So to do a, a, a matrix, you say, okay, A is equal to NP array, and notice the format's very similar to before. In the brackets is the first row. My first row is one comma three comma two. That's the first row. Comma in brackets five, six, seven, comma in brackets eight, three, one. So what this is gonna create for us is three rows, and each of those rows has three components. I can do the same thing in MATLAB. This is one way to do it, 132, 567, 831, or I can do it here on the bottom, which is just do a carriage return after each row and it'll take me to the next row. So you can either use a semicolon or a carriage return to go down to the, to the next row. And what this will create for us is, um, sorry, is a matrix which has components uh, here, given by this this here. So here's our matrix it created for us. One, three, two, five, six, seven, eight, three, one. That's the matrix we are working with. Okay. So when we create this matrix, there are ways to manipulate it and pull out information from this matrix. And what I want to talk about is how do we take a matrix? And then a lot of the components of that matrix may be useful for further computations that I need to do. And so you have to be able to access and manipulate. Uh, rows, columns, specific uh, numbers inside of these matrices. And so here's a way to do this. So we're going to start off here in Python. And I want to talk about this command here. x1 is equal to a1, 2. And the equivalent of that is MATLAB's x is equal to a2, 3. Very important difference between Python and MATLAB. Python starts indexing a row and column or the vector at zero. So there's the zeroth component, the first component, second component onwards. So you start counting from zero. MATLAB starts counting from one. So when you look at this command here, x equals a, two comma three, you go to the second row, third column. So if you go up here to this matrix, here's the first row, second row, third column, it's this seven right there. Okay? Whereas here in Python, a equals one comma two, remember since you started counting at zero, zero one means one is actually the second row and two is the third column. And that again gives you that seven. So there you go, that's what you would pop out of there. If you apply that command, x would come back as seven, okay? We can do more than that, which is we can say, let's go to the second row here. It says x2 equals a one comma colon here. So this here one means the second row. And then if it has this colon here, it means go grab everything in the second row. Same command structure in MATLAB, a two comma colon. Second row, go grab everything. So the second row here is this here, five, six, seven. So when you say x is equal to that, what it's gonna give you is this five, six, seven that it pulls back out for you, okay? So this is a way to take a matrix and manipulate individual columns, rows, or components of that matrix, pull them out, or if you want, overwrite the values that are in there currently. And these are the kind of things that we'll be doing throughout the, uh, the course, and so it's important that you have this uh, facility with uh, being able to mani manipulate the matrices. Final thing here, x3 equals a colon comma two. The two designates the third column, and this means grab everything, okay? Same thing here, x is equal to a colon comma three. Go to the third column, grab everything. So that's gonna give us this two, seven, and one. So that's how you start manipulating these vectors and matrices. Pretty simple structure. It's really important though to recognize when you're in Python, you start counting from zero. 
when you're in MATLAB, you start counting from one, and that makes a very big difference. So just make sure you understand that there are some, uh, you notice that the command structures are very similar for both, except that these little differences make a big impact uh, when you're actually coding, so you have to really keep track of them. By the way, that's that third column if I grab it, right? Okay. Couple last comments. There's this concept of what's called a transpose. So if I take a vector, here it is, 271, okay? So it's a column vector. And one thing I can do with a column vector, I can turn it into a row vector. Python does this just by saying x dot t. The t means transpose. So all I have to do is take this, define a new vector, which is dot t. It lays this 271 on its side. In MATLAB, it's this apostrophe. So it's x dot apostrophe. It's important to put the dot and then the apostrophe on there. And once you've got that in there, what it's going to do is take that and lay it on its side. And both of these are producing this transpose, which is 2, 7, 1. By the way, you can also transpose matrices. So rows become columns and vice versa. So this operation we will use repeatedly throughout the course. And so it's important that you become uh, familiar with it and use it uh, throughout. Now, uh, one comment I'm going to make uh, also around this is what if I were to have come into here and I forget this dot? One of the things you notice here, I have dot uh, print, uh, apostrophe there. Uh, you'll notice that oftentimes when you just put the apostrophe, it just transposes without problem. Uh, and that's the case as long as you're working with real numbers. But as soon as you have complex numbers, so for instance here, if you have this 2 plus 3i, where i is the imaginary number, uh, and you want to transpose this, uh, what happens if you do not have that dot is the i becomes minus i. So in other words, without the dot here, if you notice here, it turned that plus i into a minus i. And that's a pretty big difference. So in other words, just the, just the apostrophe in MATLAB will not only transpose it, but also complex conjugate it. Okay? In Python, it's just the dot t, and if you want to actually complex conjugate it, you have to use the conj command. Okay, so Python does not do this to your data where it will transpose it and turns i into minus i's. Okay, so these are some really basic uh, manipulations that you should be familiar with. So, you know, basically what I've shown you here is how to build these very simple matrices and vectors. How do you access different components of, uh, of, these, of these objects that we're creating. They're going to form the basis of almost everything we're going to do. In later lectures, we're going to talk about properties of these matrices. We're going to talk about how to manipulate and multiply vectors and matrices, because almost all of engineering and physics is going to be centered around the manipulations of vectors and matrices, because this is essentially how we store all of our data, which tends to be uh, around quantities of interest that we want to manipulate towards getting some kind of information that's relevant to a given problem. So again, the website is here. You can download all the code that I actually worked with just now. You can download the code, any future data. Uh, just go to the website and then you'll also see all the other videos for this course on beginning scientific computing.